All right, live. All right, tonight we have uh, Danny Cross of Graph Lab. Hey, wait, so where are you from? Um, what's up, man? Thank you for having me. Um, I'm from New York. New York. <laughs> I mean, I was, I thought I got hollered at you when I was over there. I wanted to try to, uh, meet yeah, up. you were here for like eight hours or something. <laughs> yeah, it felt like it. Huh? I want to go back. I've been back twice. Yeah, holla at me next time you come down. We'll do, we'll do. Any social networks you want to promote? Um, yeah, you could check me out on Facebook. Um, Danny Cross on Facebook, on Instagram. It's um Graph Lab Studio. Graph is in graffiti, so G R A F F Lab Studio. Okay, uh so tell us something about yourself. Um, well, I've been airbrushing for like 20 years right now. Um from New York, Long Island. It's like 50 minutes from New York City. And, um, you know, just been an entrepreneur since I could remember. I think I had like one real job when I was 14 and hated it. Oh, man, I know how that is too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it feels sometimes it's good to work for yourself. But then sometimes, man, it's it's a pain in the butt because it's more than what people explain to you about it. They don't tell yeah. you everything about it. You gotta so be crazy. I, yeah. So how did you find out about airbrushing? Um, so, you know, I'm, when it comes to like airbrushing in New York, it was never kind of like the Florida scene with like the ocean and the palm trees. It was more like hip hop and fashion. This is when hip hop stepped on the scene in the 90s for me. Um, and I used to see on like Yo MTV raps, like everybody wearing like the graffiti styled airbrush clothing. And it was a group in Jamaica, Queens called um, the Shirt Kings. And they mix like graffiti art with like, you know, like Bart Simpson and all these the Smurfs, all these characters on like denim jackets with the rhinestones. And, um, you know, I was super into fashion, super into art. And that kind of like sparked my interest was um, those cats over there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because New York was it was a I felt it was more bigger in New York in the beginning than anywhere else. Yeah, I think. it. Yeah, I, I guess. it. I don't know where it started, but I, it was very like influential um in new york coming from queens area with the air because yeah. i know like Padnam started it on the beach i guess it was back then or the other what's that dude with the i know tom davidson was with the guy anyway i, yeah. know, I thought it started wherever they were at but you know when, when people think about airbrushing they think of like the sunset and the palm tree yeah. and the board walk when they were on vacation like everybody always mentions that but you know i kind of got my start from a different direction yeah so now I know you you not so much airbrush, you uh you more or less in the cave. And that's always something in New York too, that's synonymous with New York. Yeah, well, you know, growing up, um, I was always in the drawing like X-Men, um, Marvel characters, and basically behind my house I could hop the fence and there was like abandoned buildings, um, like an abandoned a sane asylum and power plant. So that kind of like became my playground where I would pick up cans, like leftover cans. You know, we were stealing from the hardware store and I basically grew up as a graffiti artist. Mm -hmm. um, and then in high school, I picked up an airbrush gun and started like airbrushing my own clothing and sneakers and started making money like that. Um, but I always had like that graffiti style to my airbrushing. It was always like, you know, just shrunk down the can into the airbrushing. Um, and then from airbrushing for so long, I resolved back to the can where I use like the water-based paint now. Um, I still airbrush like at bar mitzvahs, sweet 16s. If I'm doing like trucker hats, you know, obviously you can use a can on a trucker hat or a headband. Um, like I was telling you before, I kind of got burnt out with airbrushing, you know, standing up 12 hours a day, dealing with customers, the holiday, the employees, the retail environment, it took a toll. So I kind of like was waking up grouchy and was like, hating you know everything about it like gun jamming and going back and forth with a client for 25 dollars through a dm i'm like yeah. this is terrible it's still um, the same too it's still the same way yeah so i kind of um you know wrote down everything i like about airbrushing and everything i hate and um i wanted to see like can i continue this path and just get rid of all the all the cons to this and i actually ended up doing that um where i stopped taking like custom orders um i don't give that many op i don't give any options now so if i go to a party 
I'm painting the backgrounds in my studio with like brick walls, drips, paint splatters. Like I, you know, I, I brand myself as a street artist, graffiti artist, yeah. not an airbrush artist. Cause when they think airbrush, let me get a character. Let me get, you know, all these weird, crazy designs. I kind of simplified it where I'm, I'm just bringing black. I show up to the party with black. I'm not changing colors. I go with one gun and I'm writing letters, you know, or a crown or, you know, something with a quick yeah. stencil or something. They say you have to train your customers. So that's pretty much what you're doing when you just tell you, once you take the options out of it, then they it don't know. A whole lot easier they don't even know, bro. Like they don't even say, why are you only using black or they just, they're just happy that they're leaving with a cool item that they seen get done. Well, 10% of it done in front of them. Yeah. Um, but customers like at events, they really don't care whether you're airbrushing it ahead of time or just adding a name there. Um, so now I'm able to do like a larger event. I don't have to pay two, three artists. You know, I could do a hundred items in three hours if I have to. Yeah. So you, know? you're, you're, you think you feel you fast enough? Well, it's just names, right? So just, just names, bro. Like, yeah, block letters, regular letters. I pull out the can if I'm really in a rush and I'm just banging them out in the corner. Um, yeah, I, I limited the choices for the customers and my life has been easy ever since. Mm, yeah, I bet. So when you first start, who, how did you, uh, who taught you how to do it? Or are you just self-taught? Um, well, this is before YouTube, before, you know, you could even like reference and learn from the internet. Um, I went to the local flea market and they didn't want nothing to do with me. They were like not interested, you know, it's like older guys, him and his wife. Um, so I'm like, let me just teach myself. You know, I actually bought like a can of air from Michael's that you put the gun on top of it. And I was doing a few shirts in my bedroom. Um, and then from there, you know, I was trash at freehanding. Everything was like, I had to cut out an alphabet and I basically just learned myself like self-taught. Yeah. Yeah. That's how, um, so self-taught as far as like the letters and how did you, you got a, are you well, pretty good at? I always had the graffiti background. So I was, I was always interested in letters from like, um, like a really young age. So I always had like a black book with me where I would draw letters in the alphabet. I always loved the alphabet before airbrushing. So it was like second nature to kind of like duplicate what I could do with a pen with the airbrush gun. And yeah. then it's kind of like, it just took a while to get the rhythm of it. Looking back, you know, I can't believe I was selling what I was selling. Yeah. That's what we all say. And then same thing with business. I had to learn, you know, I opened up in the mall right after high school because I didn't want to go to college. I'm like, you know, art, you know, I was getting in trouble a lot. So art kind of like saved my life. Um, it put me in the right direction where everybody that I know was going one way. I kind of like ventured off and just stuck to myself with my art. And it kept me out of a lot of a, tr a lot of trouble. Um, but, yeah. you know, I opened up in the mall with no cash register, just pulling money out of my pocket. No, no, no bags for the T-shirt. <laughs> um display was trash the mall manager was yelling at me you know i'm like 19 years old like oh they don't know what they're talking about meanwhile i didn't know anything so yeah. you know can you see the questions at the bottom right here um yeah it says, uh, one color that's what i'm talking about. so if anybody say anything it'll show up there on the okay bottom. yeah i see it yeah ed just commented um yeah man that one color is a game changer because you know you're in you're in the club your airbrushing is dark and you can't even see your gun is jamming like i you know i I got a love hate relationship with the airbrush gun. That's it's crazy though, to be able to like tell people we only got one color. That's it. This but is all I'm doing right here. Yeah, but the background's already done up. You know, the background got like oh, yeah, a bunch yeah, of yeah. colors. It got like the brick wall, paint splatters, and I go there as oh, so a, you... as a graffiti artist. Yeah, oh, all my yeah, hats yeah, are yeah. done already, so I could just go there with a bunch of um. The table got a bunch of colors on it because all the hats have backgrounds, and then I'm just freaking. Now I can spend more time on your letters. Add a yeah. drop shadow, really, you know, do some mild style letters, and I don't have to worry about the background. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, what was the name of your? Uh, is that the one I saw on your Facebook? The fade? It was a well, fade? It, my business is kind of like as I evolved as a person, I my business evolved. So I started off as like the hut of fame because I had a little kiosk. Then I changed it to Fame Airbrush. Um, this is when I had like a store in the mall. And then when I started teaching um, art, I changed it to the Fame pro Project Fame. So it always had fame in it. Um, so after the mall, let me rewind a little bit. You know, um, the mall was making good money. This was before Amazon, before everybody started shopping online. Um, and I was making decent money. You know, 
working yeah, yeah. working 12 hours a day banging out the holidays um trying to negotiate the prices with the rent with the mall there's not a lot of airbrush artists out here you would think there is coming from new york but there was nobody that would like outbid me nobody i guess nobody in their right mind would want to pay more rent period out here in airbrush um that's true so i did that for like a decade um and then i kind of got like burnt out um i stayed in the mall a little bit too long you know wasn't making money my whole staff left and i was like shit i got all these bills i gotta like make a transition and a pivot i can't just sit in here like this so i started teaching in new york city erica was good man <laughs> that's my girl <laughs> um so yeah i started teaching in the city and I realized that I actually love teaching and I'm dealing directly with children um, and not dealing with the parent aspect of it, you know, because they're the most annoying headaches to deal with is when you start dealing with the parents. Um, and just kicking it with the kids was like a blessing. And I was actually teaching kids on probation. So it was kind of like, you know, I got to help kids out that were, too, yeah. Yeah, they were kind of like in my situation growing up. So I was like doing entrepreneur classes, teaching them how to airbrush that was stressful you know i didn't have no um no teaching background or anything i came straight from the mall and i was in a charter school in east new york brooklyn and i had like four compressors i would um write their name in black or whatever they wrote on their order sheet and then i was switching colors with them this gun is jamming i gotta run to this station <laughs> no assistant um you know just just trying to figure out how can i teach an airbrush workshop mobile where i'm this is in the back of my Honda Accord and I'm just driving around the city. Yeah. Um, but, you know, everything with me is like growing vertical. So, you know, when it came to teaching, I'm doing charter school. Like I'm the art teacher, the only art teacher in the school. In a charter school, you could basically teach without a college degree. So I was in there. I'm teaching an after school program. I'm teaching probation workshops um, at night. So I would go to the city early in the morning and get like three gigs that one day from this hustling, basically my teaching. I would put it in a package, apply for grants, and um, the kids actually like it. It's kind of like Shark Tank. You got to like pitch your program to like the mayor's office and the community gets to vote on it. Oh, wow. And once kids get to realize like, oh, I can make some money, I could get fresh, it's like a win-win. Um, and we would do orders in class and they would go sell them so that I would make outfits together with them, with them. They would go to school and say, I made this shirt. If you want it, it's like 25 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever. Oh, they, mate, that's an entrepreneur. In them. Yeah. So they would come back to class. I would help them do the order. Usually I'm doing it in black and I'm teaching them how to color. That's really how I teach. It's kind of like a coloring book um, style where I'm doing all the black and then they, I teach them how to use the colors. That's and, pretty cool, um, though. Yeah, yeah. I did that for like four or five years. I was in like Harlem, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx. Um, you know, I got to see the whole city, like really like deep in the city and um, network with a lot of different people. But, you know, I hit like a ceiling when I was in the city. Um, they were getting like these huge grants and then breaking me off a little bit. But I was like the main attraction and they would have a poster of me in the city. And I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> um and i kind of you know i hit the ceiling so i'm like i gotta figure it out they um and then after the city my wife had like a sip and paint store where they would make like wooden pallets um that was kind of popular where i was like helping her a lot when i came back from the city i was like building these wooden pallets putting vinyl on them dealing with these drunk women in her store i was <laughs> like i hate this uh, um, yeah there's got to be a better way. So I kind of put like my graffiti twist to it um, with the teaching and the mall and, you know, everything really and came up with Graph Lab Studio. And then my wife jumped in like a year later and we just been, you know, rocking and rolling ever since with that. So you have a uh, you have an actual like a location, a little uh, spot? Yeah, I have like an industrial unit. So it's, it's like a lot cheaper than retail. Um, and we do like a lot of birthday parties. We teach art classes during the week. We have a summer camp, um, you know, mixed medium. It's like airbrushing, graffiti, black book um, with markers. Um, and we're going to throw like a different different kinds of workshops in there as well. That's kind of cool, though. Yeah. I see you already you already painted the wall and everything. I saw a couple Yeah, of yeah. I themed it out. Um, you know, it's pretty dope. I painted the whole background. Um, yeah. 
That's kind of cool. I like that shit. It looks good, especially if uh, it's cheaper than the ball written and all of that there. Yeah, and I don't got to go there during the week. I just go there, you know, when, when I have something to, like, when something's paid for. Like, you know, I don't stand around waiting for customers anymore. Like, it was just, you know, working in the mall, it, it took my soul away. I had to, like, find myself again. It was crazy. Yeah, I've been I've been in the mall for 20 years. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know you. I even left early today. I'm like, man, it's kind of dead. I'm leaving early. Yeah. So uh, is it a place locally that you could get all your spray or? Um, yeah, I basically got a wholesale account and they ship it right to me. I don't, I don't pay like retail prices cause it, it's just really expensive for everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, there's no way local you could get that or it's just cheaper to... That, to believe it or not, man, there's no like mom and pop graffiti stores out here, um, on Long Island. Um, everything's like Blick Art or Michael's or whatever. Oh. And they, they charge like an arm and a leg for everything. Yeah. I, I would think it would be like a... Shit ton of places over there in New York City, yeah. But you got to drive oh. like fifty minutes, hit traffic. Um, oh, yeah. traffic I'm I'm there. lazy, man. I got everything <laughs> shit to me. I don't want to pick anything up. Yeah. So, uh, all your colors that you when you do the spray paint that you teach them is it all? Is it spray paint? Is like all opaque, or is they have the transparent in them? Nah, it's not nothing's transparent, so everything has to go down first. So it's it's the opposite, you know. So a lot of people do black and then they color it in with airbrushing. With with this, I'm doing the background and then I'm adding black. So I'm going from Excellent. light to light to dark. Yeah, so line yeah. it up. So uh do uh did you do you go out to business doing bureaus or is it just mainly um, so the studio is kind of like my bread and butter. Um, it's kind of like for the first time in my life, I'm not self-employed. You know what I mean? Like if you're an airbrush artist, you're stuck behind the easel and you can't see behind it because you're stuck, you know, with orders piling up and dealing with customers and, you know, paying the high overhead with the mall It's really hard to kind of like scale an airbrush business. My opinion, I don't know too many cats that could like walk away from their operation for a month and it's still profitable okay. um so with the studio you know it's kind of like running a corporation like i don't physically have to be there for it to run so i could have the studio um with the events and i still have my airbrush career i guess where you know i put in so much work in the area that you know people still call my phone for like um sweet 16s communions events and the murals is really popular where i'm coming to like a business or a home and I'm doing murals. That's really what I love the most is painting murals. As long as I have like creative control and the client really doesn't have that much say so in it and they kind of respect, you know, my style and what I'm doing, I'll yeah. take them on um, for a project and do it. Uh, cool. Because I know it's so like a lot, here, a lot of people like their garages painted, sports themed or whatever. Yeah, like man caves and all that. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I've done that a couple of times, but like I said, I'm like burnt out. So I don't really. I tell them I don't, I don't leave the shop that much no more. Yeah. Well, I, my murals start at like 2000. Um, Damn. So, yeah. But so I don't really do like little jobs. Like if it's a bedroom, it's going to start at 2000. Some people are like, sure. Some people are like, whoa, that's not what I want to spend. You know, that's fine. Yeah. Um, same thing with the with the events. I used to go to events for like 20 shirts. And I'm like, why am I jamming up my, my calendar, running around? Like, so now I have like a 50 item minimum. So even if it's like a 30 person party, they could get two items each. The adults could get some. Like I'm only coming out for like 50 items and that starts at a thousand dollars. So yeah, that's, that's the first time I've ever heard that before though. I know well, there is like a two hour minimum, but I never heard of a, a item. That's kind of cool though. That's well, a good thought. I can't charge by the um by the hour because when I pre-make the backgrounds, I could do so many in an hour, it's not fair to myself. So it's kind of like I'll let you know when I reach 50. Yeah, yeah. And I tell them, you know, for me to do 50, like two, two and a half hours, if I'm there for three hours, that's fine. I'll go to the buffet, hit the bar up, you know, like make the best of it. Um, but you know, I had to have the the conversation with myself, like, you know, what do I hate about airbrushing? What do I love about it? Um, and now that I'm getting paid a thousand dollars for any event starting, it's excellent. And I don't got to waste my time with like smaller clients. And I feel like once I rebranded myself and got rid of the word airbrushing, like, and I raised my prices as well, it attracted like different clients. So from doing that, it kind of like put me in a whole different bracket where 
for 20 years, I was kind of like lowballing myself. And it feels good to kind of like, you know, put my foot down and I don't have to negotiate with, with a client. I send them like a PDF with my pricing. My wife actually deals with them and, and she's on the phone all day. Like, this is the price. This is yeah. it. And they don't even speak to me anymore. I guess is, like sometimes it's like uh, once they hear the word airbrush, it gets cheap. You know what I I'm saying? Yeah, I feel like they don't respect airbrush artists at all, like what yeah. they used to. Um, and they think that you need them, not they need you. Meanwhile, yeah. you're making their event like a hundred times special. You're doing live art. You dedicated your life to this. You got to respect it, you know? So, yeah. 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 So I think they use a word. They think it's it's low ball or whatever when you, when you use the word airbrush. So that's a good thought process, though. So anybody listen, take the word airbrush out of your stuff. Anybody I mean, that, that's my opinion. It could, it could work for other people. You know, I know a lot of people that have the word airbrushing and still do great. Um, but for me... You know, it changed once I rebranded um, and just got rid of that and and kind of <laughs> moved it more into that. Yeah, that's somebody's always stop moving around like I'm tweaking. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I always move around. I don't know why I do that. Um, but yeah, that's that's a. But see, what, what works for you probably won't work for somebody else. Yeah, it's different. It's different. You know. Yeah. So everything works different, and it, it, it that's your ditch. Yeah. Uh, what tip would be the ideal for lining a spray can? Lining, um, I guess the lining. Oh, have- it really depends on the cap. So if you use the caps that it comes with, it's going to be fuzzy. You want to get like a skinny cap and, um, just go like that, get the skinniest cap available. And then you could kind of like, you know, it's like airbrushing. It's going to take a while to figure out what angle and, you know, it's hard to do a name on a shirt with a can because it shoots out so fast. But after doing it for so long and doing murals, you kind of learn how to work smaller. But when you first start out, the bigger it's easier. And then it's really the opposite of airbrushing. You know, airbrushing, the bigger you are, the bigger it is, it's harder with an airbrush gun. When when you're spray painting, the bigger you are, the bigger you go, the easier it is. So what, how do you come up with your color combinations on your designs to make it more vivid? um i stick i keep it simple bro i do neon yellow in the middle hot pink on the top and like a turquoise on the bottom and you know when the pink hits the yellow it turns orange when the blue hits the yellow it turns green and then i'll throw a dark purple dark blue brick drip you know i kind of keep that neon bright funky 80s type of style yeah uh another question what's because of x is how has graffiti changed your life um It, it changed for the for the best, man. Like um, just doing like murals. I just feel like it's more you're more respected as an artist where I'm from. If you could do like a wall, um, you know, I used to be in the mall doing T-shirts, doing crazy stuff on shirts. You know, I could do a shirt for 45 minutes and, and get paid $50. I'm like, it's not adding up yeah. um, when I could do a wall in one day for 2000, you know. And I work fast. So something that might take somebody two days, I might take a day because I'm used to that mall traffic where you got to rush. And I'm just so used to working fast. I can't even help it at this point. I'm just so used to doing it like that. Yeah. Do you do like the, like you say, you walk around with your book. Do you have uh, all your designs pre draw it out? And just... So like procreate, you know, I see using the iPad a lot. Um, the yeah. client would send me a picture of their wall. And then I'll actually design it on Procreate, send it to them, and they could go back like maybe twice. Um, oh, I love it. Or, hey, can you change this? And I'll go back and forth with them. But now they really get to see where it's going to be in their space. I get to see it as well. Like, all right, if I'm doing this character, it's going to go next to the window. And I could kind of like piece my thing together like that. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. You and you already had the color in there, or, or yeah, yeah. You know, I might, you know, I'll send them the design. Um, I'll send them the design, and then as I'm doing it, you know, I might think it looks better with a different color. And I tell them, you know, this design might change as I go. I might add stuff, take away, but this is kind of like ninety percent of what you're getting. Yeah, you read that color that comment. Yeah, yeah. Am I known in the graffiti game? Um, yeah, my tag name is known in the graffiti game, but my my business name, um, a lot of graffiti artists know it and respect me for what I'm doing. Um, 
you know, a lot of graffiti artists bring their families to the studio because they used to do it or they still do it. And it's, it's, it's just a good thing for the culture um, to see somebody doing something coming from graffiti. And it's legitimate. Legi exactly. So, you know, we're kind of teaching the kids, you know, that's we're getting rid of the stigma of the, the crime behind graffiti. You know, like if you notice now, all these corporations are using graffiti especially with the 50th anniversary of hip hop this year. Like, you know, a lot of these corporations are incorporating hip hop and graffiti into their camp marketing campaigns. Yeah. So it's kind of like the perfect time if you're branding yourself like that. In Houston, they got, they have designated areas where you got graffiti artists. That's that They cool. tag the walls up and you have like a, somebody passed, somebody let them paint it all their walls. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So how's a, uh, uh, how is graffiti different from airbrushing as far as community goes? I guess like we were talking about, I guess it would be the the stigma of people call it a cheap as far as airbrushing yeah. a cheap. Yeah, I guess. Um, but you know, like when we when I first started um branding it like that and came up with the name Graph Lab, a lot of people, you know, oh, I don't want my kid to learn how to do graffiti. And you know, I had to like, you know, listen, if they're into art and they're in the fashion and you know this is kind of like a cooler art medium that they could kind of like express themselves basically i thought of the 10 year old me when i opened up the art school you know it's kind of it's in a studio art school all that cliff what up what up <laughs> yeah i think he, he just opened up a spot he, he's trying to inspire artists now cliff yo he's a beast man yeah. beast um uh, yeah i think i think if you take the stigma out of, off of it and, and change it up to where, you know, people know that it's okay. That yeah. It's an art medium. Yeah. We're doing like fundraisers for the school, you know, we're like painting the gym. So, you you know, all these schools are like outdated. It's boring. It looks institutionalized out here. So for us to come into a school um, and do the whole cafeteria or the gym, you know, it's like a big thing and it changes the way a kid feels when they walk into the building. Yeah forever you know like it's just it's just beautiful yeah yeah is it uh is it very competitive over there or is it like you said it's just you don't really see anybody that much so you know i'm kind of blessed where i'm 50 minutes from new york city new york city forget about it um i don't even know how these guys do it because you could get a quote and that business owner might get 10 different quotes from different artist you know everybody's a painter an artist you know like you said there's walls where it's everywhere i'm like 50 minutes out um in the suburbs where there's no like walls that you could just do unless you're doing it illegal there's really no legal spots to do it um and there's not a lot of competition or i guess there's not a lot of people that take it serious a lot of people have like a job and then they offer art on the side there's not many people out here that like dedicated their life to it and they evolve and get better, you know, through time. There's not a lot of it. Yeah. Like, uh, or monetize it to where like you have to make a, a shop. And actually yeah. Work. You know, with, with artists, it's hard to find a creative that has the business skills. Like, you know, I'm a really great artist, but I feel like I'm really good at business as well. And I know how to do business and branding and content. So it's kind of like you could be the greatest artist in the world. Unfortunately, if you're not like representing yourself correct or handling clients appropriately, you can't really go far. Yeah. Um, you know, I learned this lesson quick in the mall. Like I'll let a customer win the battle and get over or, you know, hey, I didn't order this size or I didn't get this color. Yeah, you did. But, <laughs> you know, I'm not arguing with you. And I'll win the war because now that customer is still happy and they're still going to recommend me. So I learned to kind of like let things slide a little bit and be in it for the longer run. Yeah. Yeah. Malcolm Lott Jr. Who's that? I don't know. <laughs> That's name. I ever could specify. Uh, how do students respond and have you had a student that follows you to this day? Yeah, um, I got like two, three protégés, man, that um, I had since they were 14. Um, now they're grown men in their 30s. Um, we get up, you know, from time to time and we come to my house and we sketch. They're not doing it as a career, but as a hobby. 
Yeah. Um, or, or if I need help with an event, I could call one of them and they'll jump out and do it. You know, and it's kind of like they don't do it for the money. They're just doing it to hang out with me. And I invested so much into them that it's really great where I could call somebody and they could come and help. Um, there's not a lot of people that I would even recommend to work with one of my clients or paint next to me. Um, you know, but I got like three cats that um been rocking with me for a minute. Yeah, that's cool. And uh I was that was one of the questions. Uh check out my boy. Oh he, he not, I can see Kelly. Yeah, I think I know him. Oh, he's uh in Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah, I think he's in Vegas. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's been doing like a lot more uh, digital stuff, but yeah, when, when he does it, he's good. Yeah, lately. Now we got to answer all the questions. Everybody, don't, don't I, I, there. Uh, tell you that for coming to Austin. I tell you to check out this interview. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I was wondering if you had any other helpers at your at your spot. Or is it just you and your wife that run it, basically? So it's basically me and my wife, and um, the best money I ever spent was a secretary finally was able to make enough money where my phone calls are getting screened my emails are getting answered and it's a game changer i could literally focus i could write down stuff and it's not going to take me six months to get it done you know i yeah. could actually write goals down and um and do them i don't have any interruptions and i pay her monday to friday um because you know after a while my wife she you know the customers are chewing her up too and i'm like sheesh i gotta live with you <laughs> like <laughs> let me let me hire somebody that that yeah. can screen these customers um and then i got a bunch of young kids man from like fit from college you know my whole staff is like creatives a lot of females um you know a lot of females that like art and then nobody really comes to me at a young age with graffiti experience they usually do like illustrations or acrylics or watercolor yeah um and then i kind of like mold them into little graffiti artists and they've been holding me down i noticed if you're into art and you have like a restaurant background like you're a waitress or a waiter and you deal with like a service industry oh you, you that's a recipe for like a hard working person who's used to working 12 hours doesn't take breaks a lot and is like you know um really happy with tips yeah, and they, they people friendly. They can actually talk. I, I don't like talking to people, but that's like a, they're really good with talking to people. Yeah. Um, how did I find a secretary? Um, I went through like three of them. I basically hire everybody through Indeed. I don't know if you guys use it. There's a website called Indeed. Yeah. Um, they try to charge you, but if you like really read the fine print, you could post without paying. Um, and you'll get like 80 people applying and then you could skim through their resume and interview them and, and take, you know, everybody I hire, it's kind of like a 30 day trial where, you know, we're looking for like a players. So we'll hire you for 30 days off the books. You know, if you meet everything, you don't show up late, you don't call out, you don't have an attitude, then we bring you on. Um, but it's been like a rotating door, man, with, you know, especially with like young people, they don't want to work weekends. Um, if I got to go through 10 people though to find one good one, I'm, I'm fine with it, you know? Cause then I got that one good one and they're rocking with us for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you travel a lot? Do you just mainly stay in your area? Um, once I left the mall and I started teaching, you know, I was in the city Monday to Friday. Um, and then I was doing like street events, soccer tournaments, cheerleading competitions. I was trying everything. Like I was literally out here, hunting with a spear, seeing, you know, what, what, what can I bring back to feed my family? Cause that's, yeah, what, yeah. that's what it felt like. You know, I had a mortgage child support. Um, my child support was like 2000 a month. Damn. Um, yeah. My mortgage was 3,200. So I had to make like 60 grand a year just to break even. Um, and it was rough, man. It was rough, but you know, I, I like, um, tried everything in the book just to see what's good, what's not good. The cheerleading competitions, like I, like I was telling you earlier, is like a home run. So I started traveling up and down the East Coast, you know, calling everybody like, hey, let me come into your competition. We're doing live art. You know, everybody sells their own merch, so they don't want you in there messing up their money. Yeah, um, yeah. So I had a kind of like, I read a book where it's like, if you're trying to sell yourself, stop, um contacting people saying how great of an opportunity it is for you 
and try to make them see what an opportunity it is for them. Yeah. So once I kind of changed my email and my cold calling, like, hey, we're going to do live art. People are going to get to be entertained while they wait. And I'll donate a percentage of my sales. Once they hear that, your foot is in the door because now they think they're making money without doing anything. Without doing anything, yeah. And yeah. that space is available anyway. Man, you think like me. That's how I was when I first started out. I was hustling hard. like a Yeah. Everything was open. I was at everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the name of that book? What's the name of what book? Um, I just mentioned the book. Oh. Man, I got so many books, Erica. I'll take a picture and send them to you. I don't know specifically which one. I think it was um, Purple Cow, I believe. That's a great like marketing book that I read a while ago. Oh, marketing book. Oh, I I just did it off luck because I, yeah. I got laid off at Thanksgiving one year and I was like, man, I got kids to feed. Let me figure yeah. something out. And I just started hustling. Yeah. Around. Yeah. Nah, airbrushing is a gift, man. You could turn, you know, a two dollar T-shirt into thirty dollars in five minutes. So it's kind of yeah. like a, it's a gift and a curse. Um, you know, cause it's like, you're, it's so lucrative, but it's sometimes it's not consistent. Um, you know, and you're self-employed. It's really hard to like run an operation as an airbrush. Like I never seen a millionaire and was like, he must be an airbrush artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, but hey, we, we can do pretty good. I, I live pretty good off of my, my little airbrush. Yeah. Uh, purple cow. Okay. That's cool. Okay. How did you figure out the demographic of your clientele? Great question. Um, so when I first opened up in the mall, it was kind of like um, kind of like in the hood. That's where I came from. So that's what I'm used to, like, you know, the, the dem demographics of the hip hop, the fashion, matching the, the shoes with the shirts. You know, I was young. It was cool. Um, but then once I went to a different mall, like 30 minutes um, north, game changer um my sales went from like fifteen thousand a month to 30 in in different malls and only paid a little bit more in rent um and then i just brought all my clients that i grew up with and that know me from the neighborhood to that mall and i ended up just staying in this one mall and the mall that i was in is a simon mall and they actually you know how santa claus is in the middle yeah it was the number one mall in the country that had the most like sales from the Santa Claus photo thing. So, you know, this told me that it's a family mall. A lot of people are coming here. Um, you know, and I just negotiated my lease because it's not like I'm selling jewelry where, oh, if you don't want to pay this crazy holiday rent, we could replace you with a different vendor. Yeah, I yeah. knew you, you can't replace me because no airbrush artist is coming in here. So I kind of like put my foot down and played hardball. You know, pretty scary. Like, listen, I'm not paying this or I'm out. And it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Surprising, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was a same thing with me. I didn't, I didn't want to pay that because they they double your rent for November, Dece and December. Bro, twelve thousand dollars for November, twelve for December. Like that's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. And I'm like, he's like, well, Macy's doing it. I'm not Macy's, dude. I'm no. not making that. Yeah, they take such advantage, man, of the small business guys in the mall. Like, yeah. I, I'm not that I'm mad at myself, but looking back, like. What was I doing for a decade? Like, you know, it was good money, but literally 80 hours a week, you know, like my back is still messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still, like I said, I'm still there, bro. But yeah, I got yeah. like two or three more years left. Yeah, and no, I respect you for that, man. It's, it's not easy. Have you ever met an artist that you looked up to? Um, yeah, definitely. You know, I bump into a, I go to a lot of shows in the city and meet artists. Um, and you know, I, I kind of like try to network as much as I can with artists out here. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you, do you admire any other mediums besides airbrushing or, or, um, I, I like people that use paintbrushes, but I, it's not really like, I never want to use a paintbrush, so I don't really pay attention to it. I really just look at, you know, graffiti artists and airbrush artists really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I'm sorry to get more like into the digital artists. I like a lot of the, that's a lot of digital artists that I like. Out yeah, there. yeah. No, that's cool too. Um, you know, and then, you know, coming up without digital, it was kind of like a rough transition. Like, I never wanted to learn Photoshop or Illustrator. I'm like, why would I want to learn digital art when I'm making it with my hands? Then when it's time to design a flyer, 
you know, I want it to look the way I want it to look. Yeah. So I actually took a BOCES program. It's like adult education. It was like six months. And I just learned Photoshop, Illustrator. And then, you know, when Procreate came out, if you know Photoshop, it, it goes hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. Layers. Yeah. I, I learned Photoshop off of YouTube. Whatever okay. I wanted to do it, I just type in what I wanted to learn how to do it. And it'll photo YouTube. It animation. still gets me angry, though, because I don't use it every day. So when I go to use it, it's like, ah, I just want to do this. And, you know, yeah. I don't use it every day. And I get yeah. frustrated quick with it. YouTube, just look up what you want to do it. And somebody on there doing it. Yeah, yeah. So what brand of spray paint do you prefer? Um, I like Montana spray paint. Montana? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, what is it? Just a different? Is the colors it's, are more vibrant, or it, yeah, it's just a more professional brand. It's made for graffiti artists, so they got like different pressure cans. So if you're doing like a big wall, you might want to use a black can because it, it's more high pressure, and you could do a background with it. Um, if you want to like make it shoot like an airbrush gun, you could get the ninety fours, and they're white white cans, and they shoot really low pressure. Even if you hold it upside down and let air out, it shoots just like an airbrush gun. Oh, that's kind of crazy because you got to know the. I guess you have to know your business though to know that black yeah. can has more pressure. White can, okay. yeah. Is that something you teach in your class? Um, when in the summertime when we do murals, like a mural workshop, you know, we teach them how to take their sketch and implement it on like a mini wall, and we go over like all of those techniques. You know, how to roll the wall, prep it, drop shadows. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Because they don't teach this in school, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, have you ever made the nightmare customer? Have you ever met the nightmare customer and what did you learn from it? Oh, man, I got so many, bro. It's like the nightmare on Elm Street over here. <laughs> um, I actually, got, I mean, I actually got sued for airbrushing before. What? Yeah, you know, the people's court with the Cuban judge. Oh, yeah. I was on that show. Um, I didn't even paint the shirt. My brother painted the shirt and it was like the holiday rush. And, um, you know, this lady was getting married and she wanted to get um, two shirts for her daughter and her daughter's fiance. Her daughter was getting married and my brother did it crooked. You know, like he always did this shit where he would make the design go like underneath your armpit. It's like, bro, come on. You know, and I, I don't argue with customers like, hey, I notice it's crooked. You know, we're going to redo it or give you your money back. I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing with anybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. But she came in hot. She came in really bugging in front of people through a tantrum. Meanwhile, I was going to just redo it. But the way she was like pointing at us, I said, miss, take your money. Get out of my face. Yeah. I get a, I get a phone call two days later from the people's court. <laughs> um, and they, yo, they paid me $300, sent a car to come pick me up and bring me to New York City to the studio. You I don't had, argue with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, it was, you know, it was a joke. Like, you're, you're suing me for like $80. But um, once the show aired, the episode, I was going to hit up on my website from all over the country. And I, I made mad money off it. Oh, no shit. Hold on. My light went out. Hold on. Let me take it. You got to pay your light bill, man. Now I had it on uh, a light I didn't charge up because, like I said, I sit up there fucking around, wait, thought I was yeah. had more time, and I did. Nah, anyway, it's, all, it's all good. So, uh, you rather do parties or do have you doing any festivals? Um, bro, with me, I only do kids stuff. Um, from child trial and error, like I did music festivals, nothing. Um, if it's not like young kids girls specifically i don't do the event like i could do a, a boy soccer tournament on saturday make a nothing really sunday the girls come sell out i don't know what it is yeah yeah but you That's know like, like, like cliff you know his style is probably geared more towards older people with the portraits and you know the high level quality of art um i just always market it to, to kids this is easier for me yeah, I like uh, like baseball tournaments. You do any baseball helmets or anything? I did um some softball ones, but I never. They don't really do as good as the cheerleading, bro. The cheerleading for me is like like a gold mine. Like seriously, it's like it's crazy. Yeah, I, I like I said, I, they have them here, but I've, I've been to do it before, but bro, try it. I'm telling you, because what happens? It might be four sessions, so it would have one group of they fill up the whole high school gym. 
um, with families and they're in there for like two, three hours, then they leave. A whole nother group comes back. They leave. Whole, you know what I mean? So you're seeing yeah. like that, it's thousands constant. constant, bro. It's like a stampede and they're waiting. And, they, and usually there's not a lot of vendors in there for some reason. And they just want to spend money. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I can't argue with them. So uh, like how I started this, it was about COVID. How did COVID affect you over there? Whew, it was terrible, man. Like it, it, I was at the the bottom that I, the rock bottom, like I ever been. I, you know, cause with me, it was, it's, it's events. Um, my whole life is based off of like events. So when it stopped, um, I actually just got the keys when I decided to open up the art school. I got them in January, spent money, redid it supposed to open in March, you know, and the landlord still wanted his rent. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, nobody knew how long it was going to be. And, um, you know, I was really, my mom passed away like a little bit before. So I was like at a, at a, in a dark place. And I was like, I would, I never felt like this before, like, you know, like helpless. Um, but I actually started a, an overnight business, believe it or not. Um, there's a park next to my house. So I would take saran wrap and wrap it around um, two trees or two poles. And you're basically making like a wall. Yeah. If you could paint it with spray paint and it, it holds on it like a wall. So you could literally wrap, um, you know, two trees together with saran wrap and paint right on it. I was basically doing it because I was bored and I wanted to show my daughter how to use a can. Yeah. And then um, some lady that I know, I posted it, I think on Facebook and one of my... Um, my friends was like, can you do that for my daughter's birthday this, this weekend? I'm oh, like, what? shit. I'm like, yeah, why not? <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm hammering sticks into the ground because she didn't have trees. So I had to hammer two sticks and wrap them, you know, maybe like six feet. And I did it. And over here, they were doing the stupid um, drive-by parades where they beat the oh, whole yeah, yeah. They did it here. So, you know, so now I'm like doing this on this lady's front lawn. And I got a car show in front of me and I'm, you know, I'm doing my thing or whatever. And it started catching and people, this is when nobody was doing nothing. So if you had like a sweet 16 or you graduated high school, it was nothing to celebrate it. Yeah. Um, so I, I ended up doing like 10 a day. Um, yeah. yeah. And I, instead of hammering, you know, I, I almost hit a sprinkler one day and I'm like, I can't keep hammering these stakes. Um, I started doing like vinyl banners, you know, with the little um, rings in them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I built like frames and I started um, airbrushing banners for birthdays during COVID. And I was just I was busier during COVID than I was before. And I was making like a thousand dollars a day. Just dry, no traffic, you know, just driving around um, doing people's um, banners. You know, a lot of high school graduations and birthday parties. And what I would do is I would make them fill out a form um, and they would have to put in their email. So when the world opened back up, I had a pretty decent email list that I could just blast and say, hey, remember me? I got this studio that you could come check out or, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It, it made everybody uh, evolve into being able to do something different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's shit. That's. That's what a lot of us did. A lot of people had to find different ways to make money. And then once it ended, everybody had all that money they they built up. They wanted to go spend it. Exactly. Yeah, they had all the inflation money and stimulus money. And they were just, I thought it was fake when the pandemic was over. I'm like, <laughs> is this real? <laughs> yeah, all this money everybody's spending. Yeah. Have you ever designed for a big company? Um. Yeah, I worked with like Levi's, Jordan. Um. We just did an event for Steve Madden Um. a few weeks ago. Um, you know, did a few corporations and stuff like that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, uh, what do you have planned for coming up for your your thing for Christmas or anything? Um, I mean, I just plan on like you know trying to like take myself you know out of the business and not be in it so much. Like, I'm not trying to be the product. Like, you know, I'm tired of waking up. You know, um. And I have to physically do something. Um, you know, I still want to work, but I, I like being in the office Monday to Friday, trying to scale a company, um, you know, trying to open up more studios um, and just, you know, be a good leader and train my staff and kind of like, 
pour into them now. You know, I'm, I feel like I'm at the age where I just want to pour into people and build them up and kind of like, um, you know, I'm like the visionary and my wife is more like operational. So I'll come yeah. up with the ideas, write them down, try to execute it. And then my wife would kind of like do payroll, make sure all the bills are paid and really be there for like the managers of the studio and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, working your way out of it at the same time. Yeah. 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 That's like me. I'm ready to do something different. So, yeah. But every time I tried to do something different, I always came back to art, you know, I like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I might stay. Yeah. All right. So I said I was going to hold you for an hour and we almost had an hour. So I'm going to start this last question. What does your morning routine look like? Um, my morning routine is like waking up at like six, six thirty. I try to stretch my back. Like I said, my back is <laughs> twisted. So I do like a 20 minute stretch, meditate. Um, I try to read a little bit and then, you know, the part of being a, a entrepreneur is you make your own schedule for the most part. So I could kind of like cook my kid breakfast, put him on the bus, you know, not really rush, sit in traffic, scramble, you know, I kind of like take my time in the morning and then I'm in the office at like 930 and I start my day like that. So what's your biggest pet peeve? Um, Biggest pet peeve? I guess is um find the right woman. <laughs> you know, like that that could be your downfall is is your significant other is, is just toxic. Like, you know, like I feel like my wife, I wouldn't be where I'm at um if it wasn't for my wife. She kind of like she helps me out tremendously and and she's super smart and she wasn't an entrepreneur. I kind of like made her become one. Cause she was so damn talented. I'm like, you can't even sell yourself to any other job. You should be working for yourself, you know? Yeah. You always have, if, once they, once you find out they're your biggest supporter and they're down for you, that's the Yeah. Point. You know, we move as a unit, you know, like our money's together. We invest together. What I'm really bad at, she's great at. So it's kind of, it's a really good balance. Yeah. And yeah. I don't even know how much money my wife makes. You know, I don't, I don't know. So oh, that'd yeah. probably be a good thing. She probably got a little side account. She got more money than I got. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so what's the one thing your business venture did that you didn't expect? I'm sorry? What's what's the one my scientist is my bad. What's your one thing your business ventures did that you did not expect? Um, I didn't expect um to charge the prices that I'm charging. They get away with it. Yeah, like I read somewhere, like if you land every sale, you're too cheap. Customers should say you're, it's too much money. If you're not hearing that it's too much money, and you're if you're not losing sales, you got to raise your price. Um, wow, and, I, I didn't think about that. Yeah, because if you're landing every sale, you're you're too cheap. You should have it where some people say no, and and that's okay. And then you kind of figure out where it goes. And you know, as you develop as an artist. You <coughs> You just raise it based on your portfolio, I feel. Yeah. Like, I never thought I would start at $2,000 a mural. I was doing it for three fifty, dollars you know, with an airbrush gun, you know, like, just to leave them all because I just hated being in there. So I would, like, take a job just to go do it. Um, Yeah. And, I, you know, it's it's a blessing, but I would never think that I, I would be there. Well, that's a good shit. That's yeah. evolution, brother. What's the one lesson your job has taught you that you think everyone should learn? Um, so to have branches, like, you know, basically if you have a company, you know, you're a tree. So say if you airbrush, right, your, your tree and your roots is your art and your airbrushing. Now you could have a branch where you're doing custom orders. And now that branch has smaller branches where you're getting these orders from the internet, Facebook, Instagram, your store. You know, so now you're getting these different streams of revenue. You could do events. Now you're doing communion, sweet 16s, football events. You know, now you're branching out doing that. Um, you could wholesale your work, you know, where you're dealing with other stores that want to hold your work in them. Now you're wholesaling. Um, you know, now you're doing murals. Now you're teaching. So it's kind of like, you know, your tree is you grow vertical and branch out. Um, and see what's more lucrative for you. So I always kind of like, how many branches can you have? Yeah, really? yeah. And have, I like I have well, I have a bunch of revenue streams, like you said. They're, you know, you don't have to just do airbrushing. You can have other other little companies outside. Like 
I do the, I got a photo booth company. We have exactly. Yeah, caricature stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But that that goes in line with the airbrushing. You're yeah. doing events. So it's kind of like, hey, I'm at this event. You might as well get the photo booth too. You know? Yeah, like, add all that shit in there with it. We do the yard sign, all that throw stuff. The cotton candy in there, you know. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah. So any advice for up and coming artists? Um any up and cupping artist, I, I guess I would recommend just don't stop, you know, like perfect your craft. Like even everything you do, even if you killed it, you got tips, you got a good a day, figure out what could you do better. You know, like not that I'm a, you know, I guess I'm a perfectionist, but I'm always looking at like, what could I have done better? How can my setup look cleaner? How can I make the client like me a little bit more? Yeah. Um, just don't settle. Always try to improve and don't be afraid of investing in yourself. You know, people make money and they're so quick to buy like a nice car or three hundred dollar sneakers. Like, bro, put that back into your business yeah. and it's going to pay off. Like, I don't know why people get a little bit of money and they just start splurging. Like, you know, I didn't, go, yeah. I didn't go on vacation for 10 years. You know what I mean? Like I was really like like putting the money back in, back in, back in. You got to enjoy your life. You know, don't get me wrong, but people celebrate too quick and um, you think it's always going to be there. I thought that too. I thought I was always going to make this certain money yeah. and it stopped and I had to figure out my life. And it was like a rough, rough transition. Yeah. I, like, I don't understand buying a two or three hundred dollar shoe. I can't get that. I really do. If I'm yeah. going to spend a lot of money, it's going to make me some money in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. Or an experience. Like I'm going to take yeah. my family somewhere and have an experience or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right, man. Well, I appreciate your time. Anything else you want to bring up for us? Um, nah, man, like, you know, I'm here for anybody, anybody needs help, anybody, you know, has a question after the interview, you know, find me on Facebook, I answer my DMs usually every day or two. Um, you know, I'm here to help. Um, and I'm always looking to like, you know, help anybody in need. Yeah, that's a good thing. I always put your I always tag you in all the stuff. So if anybody want to find them, then they can just take hip on your tag. I appreciate your time, man. I'm glad I finally got your ass. I've been chasing you for a while, man. But I know you're busy. Nah, my bad, bro. But you know, we got it done. I apologize about yeah, that. That's good. That's good. I right, appreciate it, man. Well, have a good Definitely. night. Over and out, man. Thank you. Later. Later.